How are all my plants doing during wintertime 2018-2019? Well, let's find out. Alright, so first thing as you notice, this is very junky, a quite messy and junky setup, but this would all look a lot nicer and more efficient if it was in a greenhouse and I could just have a heater inside of a greenhouse that kept it above negative 25 Fahrenheit, but I don't have a greenhouse. Could I build one? Yeah, a cheap one probably, but the uh, point is, with my current living situation, there's not really room in this yard. The neighbors have trees on one side, the neighbors have trees on the other side, so there's a lot of shade. I feel like to build a greenhouse, I would want to get a full day's exposure of sunlight for it to be efficient as much as possible if I'm already going to build one. So I'm going to hold off on to that until there's a better property to build it on. But anyways, this works for the meantime. The aesthetic is just not so nice. But let's do a quick run through. So I have this electrical furnace thing. And then I have these containers, which are the most important plants in my collection, at least most important outdoor ones. Uh, it's all the carnivorous plants, mainly Saracenia. Uh, so as some of you may know, I have everything on those heating cables. So you might be saying, well, if you already have heated containers, why would you bother with this type of electric furnace? Um, it's kind of, uh, just heats from the bottom here. This is all just for show, but you can sort of, you know, regulate, uh, the watts, the, and the temperature. This is just for the brightness of this aesthetic, but you can regulate it up pretty hot or low, and it just blows the warm air out from here. That was sufficient enough to bring the ambient temperature here to around 25 or 30 degrees above freezing um, so I had this tarp thrown over, e over everything just to kind of help accumulate the warm air uh, because basically these heating cables work best if it's around 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit uh, I don't know if I should translate everything into Celsius as well for anyone watching but I mean I have thermometers here so it's easy enough so that's about you know, I like to keep my plants between zero and negative five degrees Celsius. Just so I'm absolutely certain that they're not freezing. Now, can they handle a freeze? Yes, but since I didn't know how badly they would get frozen during negative 25 degree weather, since at, you know, around zero degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 Celsius, uh, I had some frost forming on the edges of the container, so I thought, okay, well, if it drops another 25 degrees colder, maybe the pots will start getting frozen. And that probably would not have been a big deal, but since I'm really extra with all of my protection, because I spent a lot of money on all these plants, and I don't want them all to die now, uh, I figured I'd just do this anyways. Uh, so... For most of the winter, the heating cables work. I turn it off once it's above 30 degrees, but if we're getting negative 25, I turn the heating cables on and this extra heat source protection. So nothing froze. It's exactly what I wanted. So I guess now we can start the part of the video where I go through this collection. I have a lot of stuff that I ordered, which you haven't seen before. And it might look kind of crappy since it's winter time now, but still have to unpack all of this to check how everything's doing. So we might as well take a look at what I have. Okay, so in this first container, we have larch trees. Uh, that refuse to become deciduous and you might say oh well that's because it's too hot in the container uh, This was just sitting on the table actually and I threw it in the container because the pot was frozen solid It was a solid brick of ice, but the needles are still green and they're not dry. They're still soft So I don't know what's going on with you know my deciduous trees not being deciduous But that's interesting. So I just tossed that in here and then we also have that pond cypress seedling growing. I'm going to fertilize it heavy next year to try and, you know, make this a much thicker, older tree, kind of like that. Uh, but anyways, Saracenia Acquisitions. 
Uh, this is what excites me the most because I became very interested in growing Saracenia. I became even more interested in hybridizing Saracenia once I went on the Saracenia forums and saw what was possible. So, just for a new hobby, I want to start breeding as much Saracenia as I can. But I also wanted a nice collection to start with, of course. So, I kind of got... Uh, into buying all these Saracenia. So over here we just have a store-bought purpurea, but it gets a nice purple color, so that's pretty cool. Um, here we have a nice Saracenia miner. All of this, of course, looks crappy right now, as you can probably tell, and as you're going to see further on. These are very small divisions, because basically I started with my whole Saracenia hobby uh, November 2018. So these are all dormant kind of rhizomes I've gotten off of eBay or off of private sellers in the last couple of months. So this one is Saracenia minor, Okefenokiensis, but it's a hybrid between Phil's giant and a clumping clone. So it should be a very nice, big, vigorously growing Saracenia minor. And then over here we've got some other smaller Saracenia Minor. That was included as a bonus. Here, I hope I have a tag. If not, I'm going to have to look up some old messages because this is a Flava hybrid. Oh, thank God for the tag. It's a Flava Cupria and Rubric Corpora. So it should be an interesting Flava cross. I got that as a bonus. And then here, it doesn't look like much, but this is one of my probably one of my favorite plants. It's going to grow into a Saracenia leucophila, or at least I think that's how it's pronounced. I used to always call it leucophila, but I'm pretty sure it's leucophila. A Hurricane Creek White Clone F, one of my favorite clones that I've seen so far for the Hurricane Creek White Saracenia, so excited to see that grow and to use that in some future hybridization plans. So over in this next bin, we have some interesting stuff, probably one of my favorite wintertime storage containers because of the contents, but also kind of packed this the most, so it's got the most stuff in it, so just statistically it's going to be my favorite. Um, so a lot of insulation around everything here, but let's kind of go through it. So I've got my Leia Wilkerson, which the pitchers died. It's very large. I got it off of eBay, of course. I think it was a pretty good price for such an adult plant. Uh, of course, all the winter or uh, all the pitchers are kind of getting dry and dead, but look forward to seeing that grow this spring. It's a mature division. I have a Scarlet Bell back there. Just kind of bought it out of a hardware store just because I thought it was kind of interesting. So maybe we'll use it for hybrids. I don't know, but it was a nice, cheap, interesting purchase. I think I got it for like $3, so I thought, why not? Then here, Saracenia Flava. It's just some generic, random cross. It just says Saracenia Flava, so bought it off of someone for pretty cheap, but it's got a lot of divisions. Hopefully, I will see that grow this year. Perp Montana, Transylvania County, nice little purpurea. Uh, over here, some of these divisions don't look so hot. Uh, this is Lucophila, Santa Rosa County. I think it got a little bit frozen, but you know, it's still alive. Everything should start growing back as the spring continues. Over in this bag, Perp Smurf, one of my favorite ones, something I've been wanting to acquire for a long time, of course, got mailed to me recently, so a bit of a small, tiny division, we're just going to have to wait until the growing season for that, and I guess for really everything else here to kind of start taking off. Uh, I do have some growth poking out, can't really zoom in on it, but... A number of these plants have started to grow, so I'm going to have to make sure to monitor the temperature in here so that it doesn't start sprouting too early before the growing season. Uh, but we're going to aim to kind of just keep it around 30 to 40. Uh, so this actually is just some interesting cross I bought off of eBay because it was cheap and I wanted to kind of see how it would turn out. 
So this is Cittacina hybridized with Saracenia flava. So should turn out to be a somewhat interesting cross. Uh, over here we just have a Saracenia miner. It's just a typical miner. I forgot actually where I even bought this from. Uh, but I've had it for a while, so just a clump of miner. Uh, then over back here, this is a Saracenia. I forget what the name is. I think it's Cordii. It's Purpurea, hybridized with Cittacina, but it's a anthocyanin-free uh, hybrid, so it retains this green coloration throughout the year. There's no red pigment in that. Uh, turning out to be actually a really nice plant. Might use it in some hybrids. Here we have a division of Saracenia Morii. I just kind of received it chopped like this in the mail, so just waiting for the next growing season to see how this Morii turned out. And I found out about Morii very recently, and then it became my, you know, favorite Saracenia hybrid, and then, you know, all the offshoots like the Leah Wilkerson. And I think that's everybody's kind of favorite hybrid, or at least everybody likes it. I don't know if anybody dislikes a nice Leucophila Flava hybrid. Uh, but anyways, uh, then we have Leucophila Tarnock. And over here we have Adrian Slack. Um, already started sprouting. That's not too great. I'm going to have to make sure to keep this heat off so it doesn't grow too much. Uh, so we have one division here, uh, another division here. Um, I think this is a group of three. So there's like three growth points here, and here's the fourth bulb that's kind of separated off. So unfortunately, I don't really have good pictures to show, but it's Adrian Slack. If anyone doesn't know what Adrian Slack is, is not familiar with this hybrid, uh, I think it's supposedly one of the best Saracenia hybrids, at least for me. It's a very nice looking hybrid, so I kind of jumped on the opportunity to buy four of them. Uh, and uh, we're going to see how it grows. Now over here, I'm going to have to water it. As you can see, the soil is turning kind of dry. So, I'm going to have to pay attention to that, leave this open. Um, actually, this one back here too. That's why I put everything in a bag so I can water it without it flooding the bottom of the container. Uh, so we've got some random junky purpurea here. And then we've got a flava hybridized with oreophila. And then this is one of my favorite Saracenia ever. This is a Cittacina hybridized with Saracenia minor. It seems to have retained more of the Cittacina characteristics to it, but it grows extremely large. Uh, it's got those nice windows on the back here like Saracenia Minor, so I look forward to seeing how this one grows throughout this next growing season. Alright, so that's it for this container. Alright, so over here, Darlingtonia Californica. Left it outside this winter because it doesn't really do well indoors. Um, of course, I have the heating cable. This is a different one. This is a uh, preventative uh, heating cable for outdoor pipes so the water doesn't freeze but it works equally well for plants because it shuts off when it's not freezing it's got a uh, kind of temperature sensor back here so it works very well and got a smaller division here that's pretty cool and then of course we have this huge clump that kind of came off a of stolen so very interesting uh, I'll just kind of let it grow I think it's still too small to divide because I think last time when I repotted it there was only kind of one root on it so we're probably gonna maybe reinforce with some more sphagnum around here a little bit deeper but that's a Darlingtonia looking pretty good for now so let's take that off and take a look at the fly traps underneath all right so first things first I've had a huge problem with condensation in this container. I feel like the lid traps the heat better, but you get all this condensation. That's something you don't really get if you just have blankets and uh, insulation packed on the plants, but I don't know, whatever. I don't think it's too huge of an issue. That heating cable for the reptiles is theoretically waterproof. Uh, so over here, just the collection of fly traps. Some of them accidentally got dried out. Whoops, so I watered everything. 
and now I think because of the watering, it's a lot more humid. Uh, here's a cool Saracenia from Barry Rice. This is a Pert Montana. And of course it's juvenile, so you can't really tell, but it's a Purpurea Montana that has very nice veining on it. And then those pitchers turn almost yellow in color. So it's a very interesting coloration on a Purpurea. Look forward to seeing this grow. And then just, yeah, standard stuff. There's a Florida Philoformis I threw in here just because I wanted to see if I could keep it out in this container. And then just all the other Venus flytrap cultivars I have. I want to add more to my collection, although I don't know where I'm going to put it. I think I have room back there for like three more pots, but there's way more flytrap cultivars I want to obtain, so who knows what I'm going to do with that. So let's move on to the last and final container. So if you're wondering what I have in this last container, and you guessed Saracenia, you would be correct. Although it's not just Saracenia. I have the juniper in here because I am very protective over it. Looks like it might need some water actually, so I'm gonna leave everything unpacked to check it out today. Water it if it needs water. But it might just be kinda packed from the blankets on top. So anyways, uh, there's the juniper. I protected it from freezing solid just because, you know, it's my favorite plant. I'm a little bit overprotective. Um, also, this Michigan cedar is in here. I haven't ever done a video about that. Uh, mainly because I thought it was going to die uh, in the fall when I bought it. I think I bought, yeah, I bought this at uh, the August Bonsai Festival. It's kind of a very interesting small little tree with this deadwood feature, um, but this foliage was turning brown, so I thought, oh, okay, you know what, I repotted it and just killed the roots, uh, but I think that was just the late season foliage because it's still alive and it's January now, so I think if it was dead, all of this would have fallen off a long time ago, so there's that. Um... Yeah, so we're going to kind of style that and look at that later in the season as it grows. Uh, over here, Saracenia. This is Alabamensis, hybridized with Oreophila. I think that was a new shoot starting to grow that got damaged by all the blankets packed on top, but that's okay. It'll send out a new one. Not really a big deal. Uh, yeah, I think everything's starting to send out, uh, divisions, or I mean, sending out growth points, so I gotta be careful not to heat this up too much. I'm actually gonna shut off the heating cables. Uh, anyways, this is a Saracenia Moriana, which is a Leucophila, hybridized with Oreophila, so that should be an interesting... Cross. I don't know if it's the best Moriana out there, but I bought it since it was cheap, so we'll see how it turns out. Maybe do one of my own hybrids of this one day. Uh, well, that pitcher got dried up, so that was the one adult pitcher it had left uh, from last season, but this is a Saracenia, and now I'm forgetting the name, so where's the tag? Redii, or Redii, Redii. I forget what the parents are. I know Leucophila is one of them, but what's the other one? I don't know, but that's what it is. And then last but not least, Dana's Delight. I had Dana's Delight as, I think, one of my very first Saracenia, if not my very first Saracenia. Um, ah, I knew it, I because uh, I felt like that was the last one. No, there's also a Flava Rubricorpora down here. Division off eBay, very small, but, you know, red flava. That's all I wanted for my hybrid program. So, Saracenia, flava, rubra corpora. Uh, but back to the Dana's Delight, which is going to be the last one. I had this for a number of years, uh, but then it died. There was kind of, you know, this... Uh, time when I was finishing college where I couldn't really care for my plants properly. Um, a lot of stuff happened. It's a whole nother video, but basically I had a big, nice division 
or pot full of divisions of Dana's delight that all died. It's a very nice, you know, kind of commonly available, but still nice looking cultivar. So I'm going to use it in some hybridizations. I'm planning all sorts of stuff with, you know, variable seedlings. It might not be possible what's happening in my imagination, but I thought it would be a useful parent plant for some of the hybrids I'm planning because of the nice, strong red coloration. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna just have to water some of these plants, but among this mess, you have seen kind of where I have all my plants uh, for this winter. Hopefully in a few weeks, when it's nice and warm, I'll transition everything outside to the patio. Then a few weeks later, everything will start growing. Uh, since these divisions are kind of small and recently obtained and divided, um, I don't know if they're strong enough to flower this spring. I mean, I know they're going to flower probably, but... Uh, I don't think I would let them, I would cut the flowers off because, I don't know, I just don't know if, you know, after being divided and mailed to me and just being such a tiny division, if they're actually strong enough to flower. So, I'm probably going to leave all my hybridization until next growing season. Uh, but like I said, hopefully it'll be an early spring this year, no more surprise snowfalls like last year it was snowing in April. And all of these will start growing soon. Uh, I also have those LED lights, though, so what I might do is just get an early start on the growing season by putting those LED lights above everything once it's warm enough where they don't need the insulation on top of them. So, um, not really my favorite video because everything is kind of packed in all these containers like you saw. But subscribe for more. I'm going to be coming back and videoing how all these Saracenia are doing in the springtime and in the summertime and in the fall when the pitcher growth is at its absolute peak for some of these um, divisions and clones. So we're going to monitor and see how everything is doing. Looks junky right now, but at least everything survived this wintertime season. So, good luck with your carnivorous plants. I'll see you in the next video.